Hey guys, it's Izzy here with another episode of Roadmap MBA's YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I'm so excited to discuss and it has been trending for quite a while now. It is, of course, Squiggly Careers. Um, this is definitely a trend that's like emerged in the past, I'd say, like couple of months and it's just, I think it's been something that's been around for a very long time, but we now have like a proper term for it. So yes, Squiggly Careers. I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this today because not only has it been a very popular subject for very good reason, I might add, um, it's also something that essentially is very pertinent and very will, will be helpful to a lot of people, but does is something that is a lot of people's on their on a lot of people's minds, it's something that's very pertinent to them, something that you know affects them in a good way, something that they want to know more about, something they want to do, or it's also just something that they have been doing, but again, like this term has now emerged and we can like have a proper concise definition of what it is. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you guys about this today. My name is Izzy, if you've seen my last video, uh, thank you for watching uh, Roadmap MBA and a uh, YouTube channel, and thank you for being here and listening to this video where now I'll talk about Squaley Careers. So, I think the first thing, first things first, we should come up with a definition, or I should tell you the definition of Squaley Careers. And the funny thing about it is, like Swaley Careers, the definition is just essentially any career path that isn't linear or climbing the corporate ladder. So I know I said it this way, but if you imagine you have like a little corporate ladder here or like a little ladder and, you know, corporate ladder, you'll start off like maybe as like a junior or like an intern. And then depending on how you define positions, I always say like it can be junior exec manager, you know, leadership, senior leadership, and then... You, you're on the board, but, um, well, leadership is on the board, but that's basically how I would define it. Or you can also define it as um, junior manager exec. That's also a different way of looking at it. But yeah, essentially, if you look at it like you have a corporate ladder here, or like a ladder that you're climbing, a squiggly career is anything that isn't following that exact linear traditional path that so many people have followed for so many years. Because, well, essentially, it was the way that you would go about things. You'd get into a career, you'd pick an area of expertise, whatever that may be, you know, media, content, anything, design, architecture, engineering, and you would climb the steps. Whether that means getting more qualifications on the side and doing courses, or staying in a position for two years and then getting promoted and staying within the same company, you know, and climbing those, those positions in the company, that was, or that is, climbing the corporate ladder, and that was what many people did for a very long time. And you know, <laughs> there's been a wild amount of reasons um, wide a wide amount and also wild actually when you think about it but there has been a lot of reasons as to why now um, this is not the only traditional path and why the term squiggly careers has emerged it's because there are so many options nowadays of what you could do with your career you're no longer tied to a company an area you know people go and retrain after five years people change their areas completely you know you might start off in like architecture decide it's not for you and go into something completely different like I don't know technical SEO like it, it it's just so different and there's just no limitations nowadays to what you can do um, if you put your mind to it of course and these opportunities of course do depend on certain situations certain circumstances but essentially we are very fortunate nowadays that the like the depth or like the the amount of opportunities that we had has just like grown exponentially right it went from being like you had to graduate an area study the course graduate stick in that area and just stick it throughout your life and now it's like you have so many different options which is really cool and really exciting when you think about it because it allows people to do careers they love to you know explore different passions and uh, really try out different things because that's what I think life is about finding your passion and going for it but yes so squarely careers is anything that isn't following that traditional corporate ladder and one of the many reasons why we can do this now is obviously social media it just kind of exploded. It started, it, social media has been around for a while, but the opportunities that come with it now and everything that people do in terms of content creation has really exploded over the past few years. I think that's a really large reason as to why people are no longer following the traditional um, corporate career path, uh, that amongst many others. Um, but yes, opportunities are now just there's just so many and social media has brought so many opportunities and it's so great i think also we have to consider that there's a whole new generation you know entering the market like you know you've got 
uh, Gen Z are now like making up 25% of the workforce. And then I think it's by 20, 30, they're expected to make 35% of the workforce. So, you know, you've got a whole different generation with that comes new ideas and different talents, you know, for different areas. But yeah, that's what I'll be talking to you to guys about today. So you've got the definition down. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about it and give you a couple more examples on what a squiggly career is. And then if this sounds like it's for you, um, I will be giving you some tips and tricks, or if you just have been doing it and didn't even realize, which is awesome also, I'm going to be giving you tips and tricks on how to continue with your squiggly career, how to really hone down, or if it's something that you're like, huh, light bulb moment. You're like, this is something that really resonates with me and I'm not quite sure how to go about it. Stay tuned, or stay listening, because I will be giving you tips and tricks on it. But yes, squiggly careers are just anything that is in the traditional corporate ladder. So if you change areas and you decide to go, like I said before, from like architecture or like design to like technical SEO, that's a squiggly career. Even if you were climbing the corporate ladder on that one, then decided to retrain and go on to another one and climb the corporate ladder there, that's still a squiggly career. Um, a squiggly career is essentially anything that isn't just like staying with one area for your whole life. And a lot of people do change their areas. It's something that has been really like discussed, but it's something that we see more and more and we have seen over the past few years when you really think about it. You know, your parents or think about people of an older generation, like they might have stayed in one area for a very long time, but a lot of people, you know, would go into an area and then change. That's still classified as a squiggly career. It's just that now we have this awesome uh, term for it, which is very much in the name, if you think about it. You have a ladder, think again, I'm gonna bring you back to the ladder. You've got a ladder, it's like straight, it's done, it's like very like, like black and white, I'd say. You know, there's no like, it's just very black and white. And then you think of like a squiggly career. What's what's the word squiggly? That literally means like squiggly, like lines, right? There's no like direct or like straight or like linear path. There's no like climb one step, climb the next. It's just a squiggle, a big, big squiggle. Um, and that's, yeah, that is squiggly. I love the name, but I think the name is very appropriate for it um, because it is, it's a squiggly career. And you know, I've, discuss this with many people, discuss this with like friends, and I think that a lot of people nowadays are more and more into this. I have many friends who have done squiggly careers because they decided to follow their passion or they decided that they thought they were passionate about something and they changed their mind, which again is very normal, very normal. And uh, yeah, it's just something that's becoming such a trend, but I think it's really important that you, you know, if it resonates with you, then to go for it. And I have seen people who have done squiggly careers and they could not be happier. So I think that's something really important to point out. So yeah, squiggly careers, very, very, very pertinent these days, obviously, because the opportunity we have, the fact that I mentioned before, you know, we've got a lot of like a different generation entering the market now, Gen Z. And there's also the fact that, you know, squiggly careers um, allow you to have a flexibility. And I think that that's something that people are looking for uh, post pandemic. So I think those are the three main reasons that it's become such a trend, but that's just my opinion. You can comment below if you agree or disagree with it. Um, but yeah, I think that it's the fact that the social media has just boomed, you know, the fact that um, it does offer like, a lot of flexibility in that sense. Um, but the fact that also there's a different generation entering the market. And then of course, the fact that the pandemic happened, you know, this like once in a lifetime or maybe never in a lifetime, but it did happen. You know, the whole world shut down. I'm not gonna bore you and talk to you about COVID-19, but like, I think we all experienced it. It's pretty safe to say, and we were all kind of in this thing together. But you know, of course, when people discuss things about going back to normal, well, there's a new normal now. And I think that because obviously this thing that was no one expected to happen, or maybe some people did, I definitely didn't, <laughs> um, happened, it completely changes everything post it, I believe. You know, I think that definitely the way personally I started looking at life was supposed to differ. Like for me, family became a huge priority. I know for other people it definitely did. But I do think that squiggly careers has become also very popular because of this pandemic. Let me explain what I mean by that because I've realized I've just gone on talking about it. But it was, it was a huge thing. It was a massive thing to happen. Um, I believe that like, as I was saying, I had a different outlook on life post it than pre pandemic, not like a 180, but definitely like a change happened for me. And I believe it happened for a lot of people. I think that 
post the pandemic, people, you know, kind of had a different outlook on life and were like, well, am I doing what I really want to do? Or does this uh, area of like my job, even if I really enjoy it, does it offer everything I want to do? Like, does it still align with my values? Because your values do change post something as huge as that. Um, or they might not change, but for a lot of people, I know it, there were certain priorities that were no longer priorities and other things that became much more important, naturally. So I think that that's also why Squiggly Careers have become more popular because people post pandemic really examined everything and were like, hold on, I'm going to the office five, an example, I'm going to the office five days a week, but I really want to be hybrid because I want to spend more time with my children or I want to be able to do this activity that I've put off doing for a very long time or I have this hobby that I've just started and I love it and if I work hybrid I have more time to do that but if I have to be in the office five days a week I don't have that flexibility so even if it was something that you're really passionate you might think oh well I can do something else that I'm still really passionate about and have that flexibility and again that's allows for a squiggly career to happen you could transition by climbing the corporate ladder, but typically this is done within one company and not several. So that's another, you know, huge thing that's happened. Like, uh, but then again, you could also reverse it. Maybe some people were working remote and like post pandemic, they were like, oh, I am so sick of being at home. I want to be in the office. I want to have human contact. I want to do something that's a bit more hands on. I don't want to be behind a desk. Totally normal as well. Totally fine. Totally understandable. But I think that that's a big reason as to why people also were like, well, I'm gonna do a squiggly career, or I went up consciously like, I wanna do this, but a lot of people were like, well, actually, I wanna change career paths, and I wanna have a job that aligns with my values in X, Y, Z, because they have now changed. And for me now, for instance, remote working is really important, or hybrid working is really important, or being in the office is really important, or working somewhere that starts really early so I can have the afternoons off, or, or not afternoons off, but Basically, the working hours would allow them to have more time in the afternoon or they want to have time in the morning to do their hobby or their activity. So they want something that starts a little bit later, whatever, you know, is important to them. Or maybe they decided that they really want to work somewhere to make a difference. You know, the pandemic affected so many people. They want to help people and they want to find a company that's like either really sustainable or eco-friendly or just, you know, gives back in some way. You know, plenty of companies do do that. So I think that that was a really big reason as well because there was this massive shift in the world. It doesn't necessarily need to be a 180. I know for a lot of people it was, for me it wasn't exactly a 180, it was just a big shift. It, you know, it definitely makes you re-examine things and like change your mindset. So yeah, I think that that is another big reason. So I've talked to you guys about squarely careers, I've given you a good definition. Um, I've told you my th a big three reasons as to why I believe that, you know, this has become such an emerging trend or really why we found why we've honed in on a term for it and why it's become such like a popular like discussed thing you know so you've got again i'm just gonna recap it um social media huge explosion so many opportunities a whole new generation in the market entering the market and becoming a large part of the market the market i mean the workforce <laughs> but they're entering that and they're becoming a huge part of it and you know their priorities and goals are very different to previous generations so that will also change and then obviously you know the pandemic it may seem a bit like a distant memory for some people for others it's still very fresh but you know it happened three years ago when it actually when covid actually came out but i don't think we fully started to recover until maybe not even a year ago like yeah i'd say a couple months ago it depends on where you are in the con in like the world and like what country you are obviously other people have different regulations but that is a huge pivotal thing to happen to so many people that will obviously make you question things it's just a normal human reaction to be like oh my gosh this huge thing has happened you know we all had to be inside and for some people it made them want to be more home be like and be spend more time with their family pets whatever it is but other people it was like i'm so sick of being home um maybe they don't have they don't live with children they don't have children and they wanted to be out more either way totally understandable um but yeah a huge thing to happen that would make people change their minds so now thanks for sticking around i will talk to you guys about my tips and tricks this is based on research i've done this is based on talking to people and just like it's a personal opinion so obviously don't take this 
directly if you don't agree with it if it does resonate with you great i'm so glad that i could be so helpful and again comment below your opinions comment below your thoughts do you agree with this do you not agree with this advice maybe one of the advices that i'm going to give is really good maybe the next you'll be like mm, don't know if that one really resonates with me let me know this is literally a discussion it's what i'm here for if everything i've said so far sounds like okay kind of resonating with me I've done this before or I haven't done this before. I'm curious, how would I go about it? I have tips and tricks for you coming up now. The first tips and tricks I'm gonna be giving you for today on your squiggly careers is know your goals and motivation. That's number one, okay? Number one, know your goals and motivation. What I, why are you now embracing a squiggly career? Think about like the roots of it. Like, again, is it because you just decided that like there is so much opportunity out there that you wanna try something new? go for it. Is it because you want a different kind of working environment? Is it because you're looking for something a little bit different? Again, go for it. But just know what those are. That's my first tip or my first trick of advice is just like, jot down your goals and your motivations. Like what's motivating you? Like what's behind that? Like what's fueling you to go for it? You know, what's making you say, I wanna do this, I wanna change this. I'm gonna go for it full steam ahead. Totally go for it, but just know what you're, motivations um, are because I think that that keeps you centered and I think that's really important just to have a plan because it can be quite tempting and quite easy to go for something and think oh this isn't working out maybe I should just jump back into something else and be a little bit impulsive and that's definitely not what a squirrely career is about but yes I think that if you just know what's motivating you what your goals are you know what's keeping you what's like fu fueling you what like what's your passion essentially or like what you know your passion could be anything like it could be you're passionate about the job you do or you're passionate about finding somewhere that aligns with your like goals or your your values sorry um but yeah just know what your goals and your motivation are and i'd write them down just like have a piece of paper jot them down and just like go back to it every time you have a setback or every time you think oh this didn't work out the way i wanted it to i think it's really important to just go back to that just keep yourself centered um that's like my number one that's like why I put it as number one. I think it's like super important to just keep that in mind and like keep yourself in check. And like, of course, if like a couple of years go down the line and you still don't see anything and you feel like you just want to change it, that's totally fine as well. We're not saying to stick it out for like 50 years, but I do think it's important to have your goals and your motivation written down because it will always kind of keep you in check, but it will also just remind you of what you're fighting for, what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to go for. And like I said, your motivation, your goals can be anything. It can be like a passion to do what you love. It can be a passion to have like, create the life that you want. So that might not necessarily be doing what you love. There's so many different, you know, reasons and so many different reasons why, or there's so many different things why, but like just focus on you and focus on what you want and what's driving you to make the change, what's driving you to, to do it essentially. Yeah, that's my number one tip trick or goal. Know your goals and know your motivation. I recommend writing them down just because I think that it's a really good way to go back on it. Um, because you know, like you might change the wording a little bit in a couple months, or you might think about it in a different way. But I think if you write down what your goals and motivation are and just go back to it, it's a really good way of keeping you grounded and centered. I know it might not work for some people to write things down, but I just think it's really important. You know, it doesn't need to be like, splashed all over your room or you're like <laughs> living room or kitchen it just needs to be like a huge sign but just like maybe in a diary or like a journal just like writing down what's you know keeping you going is honestly so fundamental so fundamental and i think if anyone's entering a squiggly career or they are in one i think that you'll agree with me what i'm saying here and you'll understand why i'm telling you to do this um yeah that's number one okay number two I would, so it's related to number one, but once you have your motivation and your goals written down, once you've decided why you want to do what you're doing, or you know what you're doing, what, why you're doing what you're doing, and you've centered yourself, I recommend discussing it with a mentor. It doesn't have to be every week, it does not have to be every day, but whenever you're free and they're free and your schedules can align, maybe like once every two weeks, could even be once a month. I really recommend talking to someone that you look up to, 
So I say this person would be a mentor. It could be a former line manager that you, you know, had a really strong connection with and you became friends. It could be a friend in your life or a person in your life, like a family member or a friend who has um, done things that you are really, you know, you're really like, oh, well, this is really impressive. Like, how have you done this? Something that impresses you, something that inspires you. If they've done something like that, that's also someone you could go to. Um, you could reach out to people on social media. Like I said before, social media has exploded and many people are now doing like consultancy and things like that so they can like offer advice essentially is what they're doing. Feel free to reach out to people, honestly. And I'm not saying you have to pay them, but I think that I've definitely reached out to people in the past when I've been stuck on certain things and I was like overwhelmed and surprised at how like lovely and how open these people were, like very high up um people but they would they would respond and i do think that like go in it with the mentality of what's the worst thing that's going to happen they're not going to respond to me or they're going to they're going to air my message they're going to ignore my message that's literally not the worst thing that could happen so yeah just think about what's the worst thing that could happen oh that's not that bad i will definitely survive this you'll be fine but yeah highly recommend finding a mentor someone that you look up to, someone who's done things that impress you. And it doesn't need to be in the same area, okay? This is really important. It doesn't need to be someone who's like climbed um, or the corp, like not the corporate ladder, but someone who's like climbed their way up, done a squiggly career or the corporate ladder, wh whichever one it is in the same area. That's not necessarily what I'm saying. It can, that would be great if it is in the area that you want to change to. Of course, that would be great, but you know, not everyone's looking to change areas when going to a squealy career. There's many other reasons, like many other things that they want to be doing. If that's the thing, yes, that would be a good person to go to, someone who's high up in an area you want to change to. But it, uh, when I say mentor, I just mean someone who's done something that impresses you. Doesn't need to be like the same area of work at all. Could just be their work ethic, could be the way they approach life, anything. But I think that it's always really important to get that unbiased perspective and someone you look up to because they will have, or chances are they will have great advice to give. Um, so yeah, I just recommend finding someone, reaching out to someone, sitting down with them and just discussing everything that you wanna discuss. And you know, it's like a back and forth conversation. You can ask them questions, they'll ask you questions. Someone that's like very open and receptive to it. But yeah, the word I'm gonna call this person is a mentor because I think that's the best way to describe it. Just someone who can, mentor you someone who has more ex life experience and they can help you out through the rough patches and through the good times too they can like it's it, they can have some really good advice to give you in both situations um yes and again doesn't have to be i'm just going to recap this really quickly it does not have to be every day it does not have to be every week when you're both free and your schedules align i don't want to burn anyone out and i also don't want to make anyone <laughs> have to do too much but um again it's just my advice but yes, and again, to recap, please, please don't be afraid of reaching out to people. As long as you're polite, the worst thing they're gonna do is not open your message or reply, and it's not a bad thing. It's just, it happens. Of course, rejection isn't easy to deal with, but we all have to deal with it, it's part of life, so. But I would be, I would say you might be surprised and like just quite happy with how many people reply. I was like very excited at the amount of people that were replying to me when I was going to them for the advice. I was like, you're very high up and you're replying to my message. Wow, because most people do are friendly, most people do wanna help. And if most people have achieved quite like a lot in a certain area where they have climbed into high positions, they are usually quite sociable, usually quite friendly people because you have to be to, you know, network and things like that. And I'm, and, you know, I'm sure that they wanna, offer advice and help you. If I got to a position and someone was asking me for advice, I would definitely want to help. So yeah, don't be afraid. Like the first to the second, second to third, I am now going to transition on the point of networking. Networking is super important. So I just said like, if, if you can like network with people, I do think that whenever you're doing anything in terms of your career, networking is important. Um, and I don't think that it necessarily needs to be, I think people get the wrong idea when it comes to networking. I think sometimes people think that it's just like pushy messages on LinkedIn or like showing up to every single event like that X, Y, and Z throws and you know, if it, it, that's not what I mean. When I say network, I'm saying network and take opportunities. That's my third piece of advice when it comes to squiggly careers. 
Net take network and take opportunities when they are offered to you. And of course, you should be proactive in creating those opportunities as well. Um, and the first point will help you do that if you you know keep your goals set and like your ambition and you know what your motivation and you know your set. And the second will also help you when you have mentors and stuff like that. But yes, networking is a very good piece of advice. And networking can mean just connecting with as many people in a certain, you know, an area that you're interested in. Much like the second point, that can mean just like reaching out to people who are high up in an area or who have like achieved something that you also want to achieve and going to them for advice, you know, asking them for their consultancy advice and asking them how they've done that. Networking can also mean going to events when you have the opportunity. If someone at work has invited you to an event that you are not sure if you want to attend, I'd recommend attending because you just never know who you're going to meet and you just never know what's going to happen to that opportunity. If you think about everyone that you know now and every opportunity you know now, um, some of the you saw the greatest opportunities in your life or some of the greatest people that you are that you are that you will meet are yet to come. So you're yet to meet them. You're yet to get these opportunities. Think about it like that. If that makes sense, I think that's the best way to think about it. It's not. I'm not saying throw yourself at everything and be pushy and like burn yourself out. No, but if you think about it, like there's this opportunity, I am feel okay to attend. Um, I'm not feeling burned out, but I just don't know if I should go. I'd be proactive and go because you just never know who you're gonna meet. And if you think about every opportunity you've had so far, every person you've met so far, sometimes the greatest people you're yet to meet, you know, you're yet to meet these people, you're yet to have these amazing opportunities. So that's something that I would highly recommend doing. And I'm not saying that every event is going to be fantastic, so please don't come at me afterwards saying that you didn't meet anyone. I'm just saying that there are opportunities there that you also need to be proactive in taking them. If you remember your goals, you remember why you're motivated, why you wanna do this, what you're, what you're trying to achieve, what you're going after, taking every opportunity you can and taking every opportunity to network is a good thing. In moderation, I will say, I don't want anyone to run themselves ragged or get really burnt out because that's also not great. Everything in life is a balance, I say, so, it's like a take it, take what you can, but don't don't bite off more than you can chew. It's just a balance. But yeah, networking opportunities are great. And like I said before, you know, if you want to reach out to people, you absolutely should. Don't feel ever like embarrassed or like oh, I should not reach out to this person. Like I said before, the worst thing they're gonna do is not reply to you. And that's more their problem. That's not your problem. You reached out, you did your bit. Um and I just think, again, something that's important to remember is like life is for taking opportunities. And if you have, if you can take it, then take it. Um, and you just never know where it's going to get you. So yeah, that's my advice. Network where you can. Networking could also be, it doesn't have to be a work event. You know, someone like a friend could invite you to something in their area that you might think, oh, I'm not sure if I should go. Again, definitely just go if you feel up for it and you're not, you know, like, terribly ill or something, um, like with the flu. Because you just, again, never know who you're gonna meet. And yeah, I'm just gonna say this again because I don't want uh, people to get angry. It, you, I'm not saying that you might, that you will have a fantastic opportunity to meet someone, but you might. And that's, I think, the important thing. And I think the important thing also with careers is being proactive and like proactively designing and creating what you want. You have to go for it. Things are not gonna just fall in your lap it will take hard work, it will take consistency, it will knowing. It will take knowing your goals, staying motivated, staying clear, like a clear laser sharp focus. But part of that is taking opportunities that come to you and being proactive. So yeah, that's my third piece of advice on squiggly careers. My fourth piece of advice on squiggly careers is directing your own development and learning. It's di directing that. So again, I'm gonna transition from the third to the fourth. Like we spoke about being proactive, taking opportunities in networking, like we spoke about, well, that, that will, yeah, from the third to the four fourth, directing your own development and learning. That means being as proactive as you can about learning the skills that you need to do to do whatever it is. If it's a complete, you know, 180 career change, if you're looking at like a completely different area, then yes, you will probably most likely need to take courses, people, have specialties and become specialists, sorry, in certain things. I'm not saying you necessarily have to go to university and pay for like three years, but there are great online courses. 
just like Roadmap MBA, that's for business, but I'm just saying, um, there are great online courses for specific areas that will take you like a month or two and you can very, very feasibly do them on the side, just taking a couple of hours on the weekends to like study and practice. So maybe after work, you know, if you have the time and your work schedule isn't too crazy, because I know that people have different work schedules. But yeah, just being really proactive and doing what you have to do. Much like my previous two points, this can mean reaching out to connections for people in the area that you want to get into. It can mean messaging people asking if they have freelance work in your specific area. Um, it can mean asking for advice. But yeah, I think just be really proactive about it. Do you want to work for a certain company? Do you have your eye, for instance, on a certain job that's very coveted um, that you know might become available in a couple of months or like a couple of years? I would take steps to learn about it. I would take steps and you should take steps to learn about the company, to like liaise yourselves with them, to like become more ingratiate yourself with the company. Let's say that you, you wanna work for a company. That's the <laughs> example I'm going with if you can't tell. Let's say there's a company in mind, a specific company that you really wanna work for. You've seen their content, you think they're fantastic. Start message, Start connecting with people in that company because most likely they will reply to you on LinkedIn. They will accept it. It doesn't have to be LinkedIn, by the way, it can be different forms of social media, um, but start connecting with them. Start opening up those opportunities, you know? Um, and then if you want, you can ask for uh, advice. I would always recommend um, sending a portfolio over and a portfolio over and saying, this is my previous work experience. I would love to do some freelance, you know, things like that. Um, you know, and chances are, you can always learn more um, by directly working with them. So they might have freelance work that might not be super well paid. I think that's really important to mention also when you're starting out in different areas, but it's, an op it's, a, it's like a little foot in the door, right? Like you're getting your way in there slowly. I think that's really important. If you're sending over your portfolio, make sure to, or your CV, make sure to curate it for the company. So like what design do they use? Like what logos do they use? That kind of stuff. Because even if it's not super accurate, what it will tell them is it will tell them that you care and that you're passionate. And a lot of people, or a lot of, I'm, I'm gonna say it, I think a lot of people want uh, someone to work with them or for them that's passionate because it shows that you'll be engaged with the work. It shows that you're going to go the extra mile. You're gonna go above and beyond. And that's what they, they need. They need someone who's gonna be engaged with them and with, the, with their community that they have, right? With their colleagues as well. So yeah, I think that that's something really important, just taking an opportunity as much as you can. And you know, if you can't, online courses are great, and you, that's an amazing thing to put on your CV, on your resume, like there's so many out there, and I'm sure there will be something for the area that you're looking in, unless it's like something that does require like a full on like medical degree, then this is not for you. But for everything else, there is some sort of something that you can find online. So many people do this type of work as well. They'll be they'll do consultancy, so they'll help you they'll help you throughout the way. That that will require you paying them. But again, if you'd rather do that instead of a course, I'm just saying there's so many opportunities nowadays, which is again why school careers has become such an emerging and awesome trend. But there's so many opportunities. And yeah, if you just grab it, like you will go for it, go full steam ahead, you will be able to do what you want. Um, so yeah. <laughs> to recap, my tips and tricks, my pieces of advice for squiggly careers. Firstly would be, I'm gonna go through them like I just did. I think the first one is to know your goals and know your motivation. What's motivating you? What's keeping you focused? You know, write it down. I recommend writing it down to know what you're going for and know what you're doing. Find a mentor, reach out to someone in your life or not in your life already and schedule time to talk with them as much and as frequently as you, as you and they can, as frequently as it fits you both. Because it'll help you stay motivated, it'll help you stay clear, but chances are this person that has more life experience than you will be able to give you like key pieces of advice that somebody else probably won't and they'll usually be an unbiased opinion so I think that's really important, yeah. Networking and taking opportunities as much as you can, again, without burning yourself out, it's a balance. Um, and taking the time to, your, to grow your development and your learning. So these are all very proactive things and essentially the thing with squiggly careers is wherever you're going, no matter where it is, 
you are gonna have to be proactive and it's not always gonna be easy but the important thing is that you stick with it and you know why you're doing it and that's the only the most important piece of advice is to do that I think is just to have a clear focus on why you're doing it to follow all the tips and tricks that I gave before but yeah just keep in mind why you're doing it it'll keep you centered it'll keep you grounded and like I said it's not always gonna be easy but it's something that's worth doing absolutely it's definitely worth pursuing what you want to pursue whatever that may be so yeah Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys, to this Roadmap NBA video. Um, comment below what your thoughts are, if you agree, if you don't agree. Uh, maybe comment below some uh, pieces of advice that you wish someone had given you or pieces of advice you'd like to give someone else who's embarking on their squiggly career. You know, maybe you've just started out uh, or maybe you have been doing a squiggly career for years and now there's finally a term for it. So yeah, comment below all your thoughts. Everything good, uh, constructive criticism is always appreciated. So yeah, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I've been Izzy, your host.